So every now and then in comics, a concept comes along that's just like begging to be read. And that is what Skyrim is. What's up guys, BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them. All for your viewing pleasure. If you're new here, welcome. If not, welcome back. On this channel, I do comic book unboxings and reviews and all that. So if you're interested in that type of content, consider subscribing. Now today, I'm doing a review, a review slash overview of Skyward. Skyward is this epic tome. Uh, it's written by Joe Henderson, Lee Garbett, no, with art by Lee Garbett. Let's see, who else are in these credits so I don't get it wrong? Yeah, Joe Henderson, the artist is Lee Garbett, cover, colors by Antonio Favela, lettered by Simon Bolin, um, and then there's editors. So, <laughs> uh, so Skyward is a very interesting book, um, and we're going to talk more about the concept and, and what it's all about, but it's basically a book um, about, you know, Earth in Chicago when all of a sudden gravity stops existing, or at least it gets greatly, greatly reduced. Um, and this, our main character, Willa, is going on a quest to see if she can bring gravity back. And over the course of these 15 issues, we see how successful she is. Um, I've seen this book. This is one of those books that I've seen for like, basically the whole time I've been in comics, ever since the hardcover came out, and something about this cover always drew me in. Like, it just looks like such a fun and playful book. Well, this month, I finally read it. I read it in one weekend, which just happened to be Father's Day weekend. And that was really exciting. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a brief overview. Like, I'm going to show you the artwork kind of in depth. I'm going to give you my thoughts. And then at the very end, I'm going to give you my spoiler-filled thoughts. It's actually really hard to do like a summary of this book and talk about my feelings about it without spoiling some major details. So again, while we're going through the overview, I'm going to try not to reveal anything crazy. But once we're done looking at the book, I'm going to come back here and give you what I thought about the book, um, how I feel like it holds up and why. And so let's uh, let's go ahead and switch up the camera view so we can talk about this book. All right. So here we are to take a look at the Skyward hardcover. Joe Henderson, Lee Garbett, um, and some others. So we've got these yellow bookend pages. Love that. Uh, so yeah, written by Joe Henderson, art by Lee Garbett, colored by Antonio Favela, and lettered by Simon Bolin. Uh, so really cool stuff here. Um, this is just an intro by Kelly Thompson, uh, which is a pretty good intro. Basically just talking about how good the concept behind Skyward is and how she wishes she wrote it. So there's that. And then we jump in with issue one. So again, if you've never read this story, I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler free as possible. It gets a little bit difficult uh, toward chapter issue five or so. But uh, like I said, I'm going to go through uh, without very many details and then I'll fill you guys in on my thoughts and spoiler full thoughts, spoiler filled thoughts, uh, once we get to that part. Uh, so if my face is on the screen, spoiler alert. If we're looking at the art, we're just looking at the art here. But anyway, so right off the bat, we're introduced to uh, this world, uh, Skyward. So we've got Nathan Fowler here. We've got his wife. Uh, well, the baby's name is Willa. That's who grows up to be this chick. And I forget the wife's name. I'll find it very soon. Lily. The wife's name is Lily. So as you can see, it starts off as a normal day. They put the baby down to, for bed, and then, boom, what's going on? All my stuff is floating. What's happening? Looks like gravity's not working. So now, all of a sudden, uh, Nathan, the dad, is like, yo, I knew this day would come. I, I warned everyone. I was uh, <laughs> Jor-El, right? I told everybody this was happening, and nobody believed me, but now the day is here and the world is in chaos. So this is an origin story, um, you know, for those origin story people. Um, as you can see, we end up losing a major character and boom, we come back to find baby Willa, safe and sound, safe and floating. And boom, 20 years later, 
Even though we lost Willa's mom, we found Willa. And, you know, she's well adjusted to life with no gravity. You can see there are like little lines, power lines, I guess, um, just there to help you tether to make sure you don't float off into space. Uh, what I love is just how much she's gotten uh, to gotten used to basically in order to adapt. So she's got knee pads in case she needs to like, you know, come down hard on something. She's got these uh, wrist or what are these? The fingerless gloves. Listen, back when skateboarding was everything, I wanted a pair of those. I never got them. That's such a 90s accessory. Uh, but she travels with a fire extinguisher and a gun in case she really needs to like be propelled away. So that's really cool. Um, one thing I love about this whole series is just kind of how much they play around with the concept of no gravity and how everyday people are affected by it. So for example, her friend here has, you know, is an amputee. It doesn't matter that he's an amputee because nobody ever walks anyway. And so they, they do something fun with that a little bit later on in the series. But we are introduced to Willa and her friends. Willa is a package handler, a courier, if you will, the male lady. And so she kind of interacts with all sorts of people on a daily basis. She comes uh, into some dangerous situations, but overall, she's just a fun, loving, free flying spirit, right? Like how do you would imagine a little girl that grew up in a world without gravity, right? And I really love that. Like I really, you really fall in love with this character just over the course of this one issue. And we come back to learn more about her dad. We find out that basically her dad has been afraid to leave the house ever since uh, he lost his wife at the end of issue one. Uh, but it turns out he might have a plan to bring gravity back. And that's pretty much what sets up the story for this book. So this book ends up being Willa's quest to bring gravity back. Uh, we learn about some people that uh, Willa's dad used to work with. Um, and basically it's, it's, it's that classic tale, like the two scientists, one ends up super successful because he uses the knowledge to get rich. And the other is like, nah, I'm not down for that. So he ends up kind of living impoverished and also trying to stay under the radar because, you know, if you come out and you've got these secrets and you know the real and how to fix things, then maybe the rich guy is going to be after you. So we find we find our heroes and our villains by the end of chapter two. And by issue three, we are off to the races like it's a full on quest. Willa's got people after her trying to find her, trying to find her dad and trying to stop her from bringing gravity back. And um, I guess that's about as much as I need to tell you. So as we, uh, again, one thing that I love about this book, let me just let me stop telling you the story and just show the artwork. Uh, but one thing I love about this world or this book is how much they played with the world building. So uh, in a world without gravity, right? The one guy who gets rich, he gets rich by creating like magnet technology that people use to stay grounded. And so uh, the uber rich, instead of living in the penthouses, they live on the first floor, right? The closer you are to the ground, the better off, the more affluent you must be. Um, and I loved that concept. So like at one point in the story, Willa says, hey, um, you know, I grew up in a penthouse in Chicago. Like, don't tell me about, you know, living rough and, and surviving. Like, I'm definitely a survivor. I grew up in the penthouse. That's just a funny statement to hear. But I love how the world was kind of flipped on its head. Um, and I love just the, I think there's a lot more they could have done with that aspect of it, like the classism aspect. Um, but I thought what they did do was really cool. Um, so we find that like, this is definitely science fiction. It leans heavy on the science fiction. So without gravity, it turns out that bugs grow to be really, really big and they become like, you know, the predator species, right? And so again, everything is flipped. So we kill bugs on a regular basis. Well, without gravity, without being able to just stomp on them all the time, like they grow to be huge and now they're eating humans. Um, in fact, they eat everything, but I'll, I'll leave some of that to your imagination or for you to find out when you actually read the book for yourself. But man, you can see uh, one thing that never stops in this book is the action and also 
this beautiful art. I love the colors. I think the colors are what stand out to me the most, but it's such a wispy and playful art style all the way through. Like the art is very much like, I guess, deserving or, or fitting of a series about a world with, you know, very little bit, very little gravity. Like the, the art is definitely, I don't know. It's just, there's something joyful about it. Every time I look at it, I just love it. And that's what actually drew me into this series. Um, it was the artwork. I used to see this cover uh, on organic price books and all these other places all the time. And I mean, this was only like a $40 hardcover, I think. Maybe 30 I spent on this. But I would see the cover and it's just something about it just pulls you in. And it's the same once you get on the inside. Like, it is just great. I'm skipping some pages so you don't get too much of the story spoiled for you. Um, this story was always meant to be told in three arcs. So it's three five issue arcs. Um, we got, yeah, so issue one through five tells a story, issue five, six through 10, and issue uh, 11 through 15, kind of wrap it all up. Um, try not to spoil anything. So I'll save this, right? There's a twist at the end of the first story arc that's just heartbreaking. But then there's a twist at the end of the second story arc that just doesn't feel quite earned. Um, but we end up getting some resolution in the third story arc. And the story wraps up well, if not um, very differently than you might expect it to. So I'm going to skip the ending here. And boom, let's jump into some extras. There are a lot of extras. Um, there is an interview with CBR. Uh, so that's really cool. Joe Henderson and Lee Garbett do this interview together. And then we've got a lot of just inks, right? A lot of just process pages. Um, and it's really good. It's really good. So we got the concept for the second printing cover, more concepts and just designs. Like, again, if there's no reason to get into this, the art is definitely one. Let me turn this down a little bit so you can see even more. I just loved the art in this series. Um, there's even like a page of script and you can see like how the script turned into the story, right? There's a lot that you get in extras. And I honestly think even though the story didn't quite wrap the way I thought it would or thought it should, all the extras really make it worth it. Um, and they help you to see the, uh, the creator's vision as opposed to you trying to put your own vision on how the book should have ended. So that's the book. Uh, look, cover price on this is $40. Um, if you can still find it online, definitely grab it. I know it's available uh, digitally on Comixology as well, uh, but a great buy. The book ended up being Eisner nominated. I don't know if it actually won, but it doesn't matter because the concept is so good. You just can't ignore it. Um, overall, I gave it a seven out of 10, but I'll give you my detailed and spoiler filled thoughts uh, in just a second. Let's uh, let's go that way. OK, so as promised, my spoiler filled thoughts on this book. Um, all in all, the concept of Skyward is just something that I couldn't ignore. Like I said in the intro, it's something that was just kind of begging to be read. The artwork is just beautiful. It looks fun and light and vibrant, right? And so because of all of that, I couldn't wait to dive into the book. And I think the first arc really kind of captures what the book is all about, right? You've got this girl, uh, she's adjusted to life with no gravity. Uh, we see the different mechanisms that she uses uh, to get around. But we also get a great bit of world building, right? I love that uh, the, the society, right? I love how they've adjusted to life with no gravity. Uh, so a lot of things are inverted. I love that uh, <laughs> the upper class people live closer to the street, where if you're lower class, you live in the penthouses. And like, as you look, I don't know if you even noticed, but like the higher you get in the air, the more the buildings around you look like the slums. Like I thought there was a lot that was really cool about that concept and the human condition and the human response to, all right, there's no gravity. Of course, the mega capitalist found a way to stay on the ground 
and kind of build their lives as if nothing had ever happened or affected them adversely. So that was really cool. Um, but I think after volume one, it does kind of, I won't say fall apart. It just goes in places. The world building just gets to a point where it's like, okay, it's a little bit more fantastical. It's a little bit less grounded, which there's a book with no gravity. Of course, it's not going to be grounded, but you know, it, it just, it, it kind of felt like the concept kind of got away a little bit. Um, now, Again, I read this book on Father's Day weekend. So, spoiler alert, uh, at the end of the first arc, uh, Nate Fowler, Willa's dad, passes away, right? And that gave the book a certain weight to me, right? I'm, I'm reading it on Father's Day weekend. I've got two little girls. And so it immediately put me in the mind space of like, oh, snap, what if like all of my life's work I don't get to complete and I have to just hand it off to my kids. I would imagine that they're able to take my life's work and do something awesome with it. And so I was very excited about this idea of seeing Willa complete her father's like master plan. And it didn't exactly go the way I thought, right? You And I don't want to completely spoil the ending because I want you to be able to read the book. But let's just say after volume two, Oh, after volume one, I think it really kind of gets away. But then there's a twist at the end of volume two, so at the end of issue 10, that just feels unearned. Um, so again, major spoiler alert, Willa's mother, uh, we find out, wasn't dead. And she comes back. And I feel like the rest of the book is trying to justify Willa's mother being there across those last five issues. And I don't really know how successful they were. Um, and this has to do with the way they ended up bringing gravity back or uh, their solution for it all. It just felt like it took a turn and never quite recovered from that turn. But there's so much good stuff between volume one and two that volume three doesn't completely discount it for me. Um, it definitely takes a disappointing turn for me, uh, plot-wise and story-wise, but it's still a good book. Uh, there's so much good, great concepts, action, uh, art, all of it across the entire book. But uh, as far as the story, I was most invested in the story in volume one and two. Volume three, it was just kind of like, all right, let's just see how this ends. And because of all of that, I'd probably have to rate this story a solid seven. It's good, but it's definitely got like kind of noticeable flaws. It kind of, the ending got away from me. That's all I would say. So yeah, seven out of 10, I think is a fair uh, assessment of the book. But I very much believe it's worth the read. Uh, the concept and all the ways they explore it are just too good to ignore. I would never tell you if you saw this book on the shelf, to skip it. I think you could probably take in the concept by just reading volume one, but I think volume two definitely helps a lot as well. And by the time you get to volume three, you're gonna wanna see how it finishes anyway, so you might as well. So if this hardcover is still available, I would highly recommend picking it up. I don't believe they have it on sale at our channel sponsor Organic Price Books anymore. But if you can find it on Amazon, if you can find it through a third party seller on eBay or something like that, I'd say grab it. It's worth it uh, to get this art in an oversized format. These pages are really thick and beautiful. Uh, it's a very well constructed book. Um, but like I said, as far as the story, I think the best parts of the story are in the first 10 issues. Uh, but it's an interesting enough ending. You're not going to see the ending coming. And so if you like that, if you like just your expectations being subverted, definitely check it out. Definitely check it out. So that's my final verdict. Uh, Skyward by Joe Henderson, Lee Garbett. I'd give it a seven out of 10. Definitely some good reading. Um, would I read it again? I probably would. Like, I'd probably read this like when my daughter gets a little older, maybe we read this together. There's a lot of good things in it. The father-daughter aspect, um, this, the girl finding her independence and and, and uh, being determined to kind of prove herself to herself. There's a lot of things theme-wise that I love about the book. Execution-wise, 
not as much, but it's really strong through 10 issues and just kind of slightly falls off through the last five. So that's my final verdict. Skyward, you should definitely grab it. I'd recommend reading it. It's still a recommend, um, but I feel like they could have knocked it out of the park. And instead, we got like a solid, I don't know, triple. <laughs> so there you go. Those are my thoughts. What did you think of this story? Do you love it? I know a lot of people really love this book, and I loved it too. When I was in the book, I loved the book. But anyway, what are your thoughts? Leave them down below, and then let me know what you want to see me review next. I know I got to read part two of the Uncanny X-Men, and I'm supposed to be jumping into Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips' criminal territory here soon. But what are some stories that you were curious about, that you wanted an opinion on? Let me know in the comments down below and we'll see if we can make them happen. I hope you saw something you liked in this video. If not, hey, that's cool. So you can always buy what you like. Just make sure you read what you buy. And be nice to others because kindness makes the world go round. Peace.